Welcome everybody to this third workshop in my advanced PBA series. After the fundamental drag and drop technique and its sliding doors variation, both of which you can find in my online shop, in this workshop we're about to face a way more complex topic. The scrollable timeline I already showed on several occasions and which you can find in some videos on my YouTube channel. As usual, let me spend a couple of words on myself for the many of you who know nothing about me. My name is Alessandro Grimaldi. I've been a developer for about 40 years as I started in 1982. Since 1998, my main working tool and by far my favorite language is VBA. I had the chance to work as a consultant for a United Nations agency called the World Food Programme not only in their headquarters in Rome, but also in Afghanistan, in Pyongyang, North Korea, and in Addis Ababa, um, Ethiopia. I worked for other major national and international companies in Italy and Austria, and spent five years as a VBA developer at the European Central Bank in Frankfurt. So the topic we're about to tackle is hard. It's going to take a lot of concentration and effort, but the result will probably pay off. This is an example of what we want, a scrollable timeline where you can place objects. In this case, we are talking about ships and ports, but in general, we can use this object every time we have to handle events occurring in time. Think, for example, of incoming and outgoing emails, or a set of meetings, or expeditions of goods of any sort, or even incoming and outgoing hotel guests any situation where we need to provide the users with a visual representation of temporal relations uh, among events. In this tool I created years ago, when I was consulting for the United Nations in Ethiopia, I added several additional features, three timelines, multiple scrolling modes, automatic cost calculations, a simulation mode, and also used the drag and drop code to have draggable ships, and even more that would be too long to describe in details. I recycled the same idea for this way more complex system I created at the European Central Bank in 2019 to track incoming and outgoing emails and attachments for about 108 uh, European banks. Quite a large number of documents and information to display on the timeline, about 9,000 emails and 6,000 attachments. In this case, the timeline was huge, with 125 lanes, but the result was quite satisfying, though a bit slow when scrolling, an operation which, after all, was not really frequent. But keep in mind that Access is not a graphical system, and here we are somehow pushing it to, and sometimes beyond, its limits. I also had to create a variation of this timeline and synchronize to it, to show the actual mail threads. Synchronize means that if I click on an object in this timeline, the other timeline automatically scrolls and selects the same object. And the same, of course, happens if I click on the main timeline. Here, as well, the objects were even movable. This requires several modifications to the basic code, but the core idea remains the same, a scrollable timeline with some objects placed on it, even though, as this example shows, you can apply uncountable variations. I decided to split this long workshop in three chapters. In the first, we'll draw the scrollable timeline. If you prefer, you can decide to stop here and you will have an object you can easily embed and use in your projects and what to do with it will be your responsibility. In the second chapter, we'll talk about the presence vector, often called bit field, a technique I really like a lot, which can be applied to a wide range of problems. This chapter will be somehow independent from the timeline, so you are free to watch it regardless of the other two, if you're not interested in the timeline thing. But it will lay down the foundation for the third and last part, in which we'll use this technique to place objects on the timeline we built in the first chapter. This is the least independent of the three chapters. It won't make much sense to watch this without at least the first one. This structure gives you a few choices, so you can follow the path you prefer. You can watch the first part and you'll end up with a scrollable timeline you can embed in your applications. You can watch the first and the third part and you'll have a scrollable timeline on which you can place objects, but you probably won't thoroughly understand how it works unless you already know how the bit field technique works. 
you can watch the second chapter only to learn about the bitfield technique, which, as I said, can be used in a large number of situations and forget about the timeline. Or you can watch the three chapters in sequence and get all the details. Whatever your choice, I hope you'll find what you see interesting and useful. So let's kick it off.